In this installment, I'm going to continue teaching you about gas calculations. But before starting, I'd like to introduce you to this link, which will connect you to a separate video that I've made on my YouTube channel that shows me detonating a couple of different explosive gases and balloons. It's not really that cool of a video. You're not required to watch it. But if you want to, it's hopefully kind of funny. With that said, let's get to business. If we want to calculate gases' individual densities or molar masses in a system, we can use the following equation right here, which is derived from the ideal gas law equation. Now, if you want to know how it's derived, you can look at page 396 of our text. I'm not going to show you here. In this equation, D is the gas's density, which is mass divided by volume. N is its number of moles. This fancy letter M is the gas's molecular weight in grams per mole. V is the gas's volume. P is its pressure. R is the ideal gas constant, which I talked about in an earlier video. And T is the gas's temperature. Let's take a look at a problem. Calculate the density of NO2 gas at 0.97 atmospheres and 35 degrees Celsius. And calculate the molar mass of a gas if 2.5 grams of it occupies 0.875 liters at 685 torr and 35 C. I'm not doing this problem here, but you can click this link to watch the solution if you like. All right, let's move on. While studying gases in the 1800s, a British scientist named John Dalton observed that the total pressure of a mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures that each gas would exert if it were present alone. That's summarized by using this mathematical equation. Total pressure of all these gases in one container equals the individual pressure of gas 1 added together with the individual pressure of gas 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. for however many gases you have in the chamber. This is known as Dalton's law of partial pressures. So this equation implies that each gas behaves independently of the others. Hence, we can actually calculate each gas's individual pressures by using the ideal gas law equation like this. OK, this looks complicated. But the ideal gas equation, if rearranged to put pressure on one side and everything else on the other, looks like P equals N multiplied by RT divided by V. You can once again separate that out and calculate individual pressures for each individual gas if you know the individual number of moles of that gas in any given system. It's pretty dang cool. So let's take a look at a problem. A mixture containing 0.765 moles of helium, 0.330 moles of neon, and 0.110 moles of argon is confined to a 10 liter vessel at 25 C. Calculate the partial pressure of each gas in the mixture and calculate the total pressure of the mixture. Once again, I'm not doing this problem here, but you can click the link to see it done elsewhere. And separately, a sample of 5 milliliters of diethyl ether, whose density is given there, is introduced into a 6 liter vessel that already contains a mixture of nitrogen oxygen whose partial pressures are as follows. The temperature is held at 35 degrees Celsius, and the diethyl ether totally evaporates. <gasps> calculate the partial pressure of the diethyl ether and calculate the total pressure in the container. Once again, I'm not doing this here, but you can click this link to see it done in another video. That brings us to the end of this lecture video. Stay tuned to the next one, in which I'll teach you more crazy stuff about gases and gas calculations. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.